this happen. And ensuring that once you have people to rely on, these people don't do it because they want a job. There's nobody who has come behind me for this campaign for that reason. And we started in 2008. I didn't win. In 2010, I didn't win. In 2012, I won. And these people have been there from then. They have been there from then. And when I say that I do what I do, I hold myself up because of the way that I have been raised. But I could not do anything that would bring disappointment to these people who have committed themselves to support me in this endeavor. And so I thank you each and every one so very much. So good afternoon, St. John. I greet you at the end of a long and tiring week, one in which we considered a budget for the territory and when we were faced with some very tough decisions. We faced the choice of whether to borrow money for working capital because we're still feeling the effects of the Great Recession. We face the choice of whether to borrow money to bridge the gap in our budget. And ultimately, we made the decision to do so, but also what was not proposed in the governor's bill, to provide $100 million in new monies to support the government employees' retirement system. I Thank you. I want to tell you how that came about. So the governor proposed borrowing somewhere in the neighborhood of $426 million, floating bonds to that very fair. This represented working capital to meet the government's obligations for the new fiscal year, for support of the territory's uh, two public hospitals, and I believe for my recruiting as well, to provide for the landfill closures all in the sum of about 147 million, with the remaining 275 million, give or take a million here or there, to support a variety of capital projects in both districts. The capital projects ranged from a $5 million tire shredder to $32 million for an elementary and middle school on the island of St. John. 34 million for construction and renovation of Lionel Roberts Stadium and Winston Remo Recreational Centers on St. Thomas and other recreational facilities in both districts. The only mention or reference to the GERS was $5 million, same as the shredder, for construction of infrastructure improvements to modernize the Waiko Havenside complex. There were varying sentiments about the mix of projects and why the governor had chosen these projects and not others, which various senators felt should have, should have been prioritized. I, for one, was shocked that there was no more attention given to the GERS, particularly in light of the dire projections we had heard a day or two before. Obviously, there was no agreement between senators on a way going forward. And even more obvious, that there would have to be separate consideration of the borrowing for working capital and the capital projects proposed. So we caucused. Senator Leiber first brought up the lack of attention to GERS, but the conversation moved in all kinds of directions. I listened, as I do customarily, and when it was my turn to speak, I reminded them that I had always expressed a reluctance to borrow money for government operations. I said, however, that this time I was considering supporting the borrowing, but that it should include specific consideration of the needs of GERS. I put the $100 million figure on the table, and of course, even more discussion ensued. I had to convince some that this was a good move, despite the fact that GERS was looking somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.4 to 1.7 billion dollars. 
So no, there are those persons who would say, but what is $100 million going to do when the request is 1.4 to 1.7 billion? Now, if there's any person in this gathering who believes that the Virgin Islands government can access 1.4 billion to, or 1.7 billion right at this present moment to put into the retirement system, raise your hand and let's have a meeting right now about how we can make this possible. Yeah? So most people know that that's not going to happen right this minute. So there's an obvious question. So because you can't put 1.4 or 1.7 billion into it, you should do nothing? My answer is no. Because there is no person that can convince me that we should allow this system to fail. So 100 million seems to me an appropriate beginning recognizing that there is still more work to be done to address any structural issues that may remain that have fatal consequences for the system and other ways to direct specific streams of revenue to support this system which is at the core of the economy of the Virgin Islands. I also want to tell you about what has happened since then or even before with the characterization of the bonds issued by the territory and now being widely described leading, uh, led by our newspaper as junk bonds, right? You ought to know that the Virgin Islands government, unlike the government of Puerto Rico to our west, has never defaulted on any payment related to our bonds for between 30 and 40 years. 30 and 40 years. And that several bonding attorneys, including our own bond council, will tell you that an unprovoked nine notch downgrade of our bonds based on our history of no default was unprecedented. And you should also know that what that means is that we are at the mercy of many forces that cause us to then describe ourselves and the bonds we generate as junk. Puerto Rico has had the advantage, or at least it seemed to them like an advantage, to issue what are called general obligation bonds. The Virgin Islands has issued revenue bonds, which means that specific streams of revenue are pledged to repay these bonds, and there's a specific process of ensuring that bondholders get their money. So we have not borrowed money the same way that Puerto Rico has, and the Virgin Islands has had no history of default. Our bonds became labeled junk, not because of the 1.5 billion unfunded liability of GERS, but because our gigantic neighbor to our west, with its 4 million people and its 3,400 square miles, is going bankrupt. And it's like the Titanic when the sea starts to swirl and there's a whirlpool, the people nearby can get sucked right in. It also makes us think about our territorial status. We and Puerto Rico, no matter what it calls itself, Commonwealth, free state, and association with the United States, we are unincorporated territories of the United States. No vote in Congress, no vote for the president. We are the same. And so what they are saying is that if Puerto Rico, remember now, the bonds uh, that we issue that are supported by the internal the matching revenue funds as well as the gross receipts taxes collected in the Virgin Islands, the bondholders have a security interest 